from Anshay Svar Beth El Emeth Congregation. It's time to take 10 minutes for Torah with Rabbi Joel Finkelstein. Welcome to our discussion of Parshat Bo, Attitude Towards Dogs. We know that many people are big dog lovers. It's very popular here in the South and in America in general. People love to have a dog and there's a wonderful relationship between humans and dogs. Of course, some people don't like dogs and are very phobic about dogs or, and don't enjoy dogs. What about Chazal? What about our great sages? Torah itself, what's our attitude towards dogs? Well, it comes up in our parsha because God wanted to show that the plague of the firstborn was only for the, for the Egyptians and not for the Jews. So in the, in the Egyptian community, you could tell there was a plague because people were screaming, obviously, at the terrible loss of their firstborn. But in the Jewish community, everything was quiet. However, the dogs would have barked in the Jewish community. You couldn't tell the difference between the Jewish community and the non-Jewish community. So therefore, the dogs didn't bark. Even the dog didn't bark. And says, says the Gemara, in fact, the dogs were rewarded that when you have meat that's not kosher, what do you do? Well, the Torah doesn't need to tell you what to do with it. You could sell it to a Gentile. You could, I don't know, you could feed it to any animal. The Torah specifically says feed it to, your, to a dog. So... Why does the Torah spell out the dog? Because you should pay back the dog. The dog listened to God and he was quiet in, in the land of Goshen where the Jews lived. So too, you should pay back the dog as well. That's on the positive side. Another positive note is the al Shimoni, the Medrash says that the dogs are great because the dogs didn't bark. You know what they get? When you prepare a Torah, you know, you have to tan the skin. It doesn't, you know, the, the animal doesn't grow a hide like you have when you write a Torah. So how do you tan the skin? Well, believe it or not, they used to use dog excrement as a way of tanning the skin. So uh, they're also rewarded because, believe it or not, the dog somehow makes it into the Torah itself. Another, uh, another positive element of dogs uh, is the notion that uh, the dogs are makiras kono. Gemara Horios, Yud Gimel 13, says that dogs remember their maker. What does that mean? You know, if, if you feed the dog, the dog always remembers, you fed me, he protects you, he stays with you, he walks you, wherever you go, he goes. And in fact, the Chavetz Chaim has a thought about this based on a medrash, that the, the sign that Cain was given was a dog, so that nobody would kill Cain because he had a special watchdog. But uh, why a dog? Because Cain forgot about God, and he killed his brother. So in order to show, so he shouldn't forget his maker, he got a dog because a dog never forgets its owner. However, uh, just as we have these positive statements about dogs, we also have some negative statements. Number one, that you're not allowed to be Megadel Kelev Rab Toch The um, The Gemara in Baba Kama, 15b, mentions that oh, we shouldn't raise bad dogs. It's terrible. How can you, how can you have a dog that's going to cause damage? You shouldn't have something dangerous in your house. You shouldn't have uh, barbed wire in your house. You shouldn't have dogs in your house. They could bite someone, God forbid. That's a kill of Ra. That's a bad dog. Now, if you have such a dog and you keep him chained up with, with chains, then, and only then, could you uh, say that it's still safe. But there's another problem. The Gemara in Shabbos 63a says that that if you have a dog in your house, then there will be less kindness. Why? So Rashi explains <laughs> How can a poor man come to knock on your door? The dog chases him away. This is a basic problem of hospitality. If you're supposed to have a home that's like Abraham, what did Abraham have you know? What did he do? He had an open tent from all sides, and he would stand and wait for the guests to come. But if instead you have a dog outside your, your house chasing people away, it's a problem. Now, if you live in a dangerous neighborhood, that makes sense. You have the dog to protect you. However, if every time somebody, a friendly person, walks in the, in the door, he's accosted by a dog, this could be an element of having a wrong type of household. It's a very serious uh, problem. Now, the, um, the, the um, Yavetz, the Rabbi Yaakov Emden, uh, he had some strange ideas about a lot of things, and one of them was sort of anti-dog. He says it's terrible. Some of these some of these people today, they spend a lot of money getting a special breed of dogs and they play with them all the time. He says, Moshev, lo, lo It says in the first Psalm 
that you shouldn't dwell among scoffers and, and uh, jokers. Uh, you should be with serious people. So to sit around with a dog and play with the dog, he thought it was terrible. However, most people don't seem to worry too much about this opinion. Uh, he also took a negative view on dogs when the, the Gemara Bracho says, you should always feed your dog, your animals first, and then you eat. Because it says in the Shema that your animals will eat in the field, and then you shall eat. So um, he says, well, don't worry about it too much. You can, you can eat before your dog. It's not the worst thing. You don't have to be so careful uh, about that. Now, um, what about Shabbos? On Shabbos, there could be some problems with the dog. Number one, carrying. If you want to walk the dog, you don't want to well, you don't go outside without the leash because then he might attack someone, uh, uh, he might run away. So you're holding the dog on a leash. But how can you, if you don't have an Eruv, and today most people live where there's an Eruv, but if you don't, then how can you walk in a place where there's no Eruv, there's no surrounding enclosure in that city, and you're not allowed to carry if you're carrying a leash, if you have the leash in your hand, you're carrying a leash. So the answer is, no, you're not carrying a leash. The leash is attached to the dog. But you have to make sure that the leash doesn't leak out from the other side of your hand. Sometimes you have long leash, so you can have a foot of it on one side of your hand. On the other side, you have the dog. No, you should hold the very edge of that leash. Then, sometimes the leash droops and hits the ground. That could be carrying. So you have to make sure that the leash is taut. So you have a short leash. The dog is always running and going, so he leads. And it's like, a, it's like a stick between you and the dog. And that's okay if you have it that way. Now, uh, what about the problem of muksa? We know that, in general, animals are muksa. They're not set aside for use. Let's say there's all of a sudden there's a, there's a, 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 a bird that wants to sit on your finger on Shabbos. No, you can't move it. The bird was, wasn't set aside for Shabbos use. You can't, uh, can't, can't move it. So what about the dog? Sometimes you want to take the dog and put it, take him from over here and put him over there. Someone comes to the house, they don't like dogs, so you have to take the dog, remove the dog. But if you pick up a dog, that's moksa. You're not allowed to move something that's moksa. So some people thought it was a real problem. However, many modern authorities, Rabbi Shalom Zaman Nurbach, I think Rabbi Moshe Feinstein as well, Panini Halacha, Rabbi Malamit, they all say, don't worry about it. Today, your dog is like a toy, just like you can play with a toy. You say, well, what use is it? It doesn't do any good. It's a monopoly piece. What good does it do? I said, well, you enjoy playing it. So then you can move the pieces. So do a dog. People enjoy the dog. They can carry the dog. They used to say that you should try to lift up your dog before Shabbos and say, this dog is for Shabbos use. But apparently, the many authorities say it's not necessary. So finally, what is the Jewish attitude towards a dog? Can you have a dog, not have a dog? The answer, like everything else in Judaism, it has to follow those criteria. If you're in danger, you can have a dog. That's a protection dog. If if you, you, if you keep the dog away from others, you can have a dog even if he's a little bit uh, um, overly protective, let's say. It's good in general to have a dog that's nice and, and generous. Uh, and you have to make sure that the dog doesn't dissuade visitors, and particularly the poor, from coming uh, to your house. If you follow these guidelines, then indeed it could be permissible to have a dog. Some people find it great companionship and they enjoy it, so that's fine as long as you stay within the confines of the halachic guidelines. I thank you for joining us here at the Anshay Sefer Beth Lameth Congregation for a discussion of, of dogs and Jewish thought and Jewish law. Join us each week for a discussion of the Parsha and the holidays. And thanks to Jason Lefkowitz, our producer. Thank you. This has been 10 Minutes for Torah with Rabbi Joel Finkelstein. To learn more, visit asbi.org.